Thank you all so much for being here today. I'm going to be talking about how species in the oceans around North America are responding to this time of unprecedented environmental change. And they have a few options. One option is to go extinct, not the best option. Uh, another option is for species to adapt to these new conditions. And a third option that many species are taking advantage of, and we've seen this repeatedly, is that some species are shifting their geographic distributions to match the temperature or other environmental profiles that they need to survive. And so, as I just said, species are on the move. Here is one popular local example. It's a black sea bass, which is a popular recreational and commercial fishery uh, here on the East Coast. To orient yourselves a little bit, on the southern portion of this map, we have Cape Hatteras in North Carolina, and the map extends up to Maine and Nova Scotia. Uh, if you can see the small red star, that is about where we are right now. This is a map of where black sea bass were likely to be found in the late 60s. As you can see, they were most likely to be found at the southern extent of this picture. But let's zoom forward to 2014. And as you can see, they have moved north and they're much more likely to be found off the coast here in New Jersey or even up in the Massachusetts area. And there are a number of reasons that we might be seeing patterns in black sea bass and a number of other species around North America. Species could be tracking the prey species that they depend on. They could also be responding to var variations in fishing pressure around the region. But additionally, they could be responding to environmental change, uh, and especially in the water that they're submerged in. And specifically, what we've found is that temperature, even though it's not the only important variable, it does explain the majority of the patterns in these shifts that we're seeing. And so why is temperature so important for these marine species? Well, temperature is really important for any type of ectotherm or cold-blooded, we could say, animal. And that's because they are inherently dependent on the temperature of the fluid that surrounds them for a number of biological processes that we've heard about already today. And so what's particularly interesting about water is that it's a really unique fluid in the fact that the heat capacity of water is four times that of air. And what that means is that it takes four times the energy to change, a gram, change the temperature of a gram of water as it does to change that same gram of air. And so because of that, it, over the course of a year, these species don't actually experience that much variability in temperature. And because of that, they're really sensitive to the changes that we've seen more recently. And so back to the picture of the sea bass distribution. I have been particularly interested in the areas within the range that are interacting most with the changes in these, or the range shifts that we're seeing. So specifically colonizations that we're seeing at the leading edge, and then also local extinctions that we're seeing at the trailing edge. And not only for black sea bass, but actually for hundreds of species around North America, both of fish and then also of invertebrates. And what we found by really parsing apart these two edges of their range is that the, in the context of North America, the northern boundary responds quite rapidly to changes in temperature. So if a region has experienced a significant change in temperature, then that means that these species can move into that new area actually quite instantaneously. But what's really interesting is that the story is different on the trailing edge. What we're seeing is, about, is a lag from two to three years on average for how these species are moving and changing. And so this could be happening for a number of reasons. It could be because temperature for some species is not the driver of these shifts, but it could also have to do with generation time. Maybe adults can tolerate these changes in temperature, but maybe juveniles cannot. Or perhaps adults can live in these new temperatures but they can't reproduce in these new temperatures. And so in the big picture, what does this mean? One thing that's, one pattern we've observed is that species richness, at least in North America, is actually on the incline. 
That's in contrast to what we're seeing at the global scale, which is biodiversity decreasing. Uh, and also likely in contrast to other regions, such as the tropics, where they might not be seeing this bulge in numbers. Additionally, it shows us that climate change does not impact every individual of a species in the same way. It may depend on where that individual is living. And it can also be a good source of information for fishermen in terms of thinking into the future what fish might be available for them to catch. And finally, for me moving forward, what I'm excited to incorporate is more information not only about variability within a species, but across different species, and incorporating species traits into these different analyses. Thank you so much. <laughs>